everybody. Welcome back to Psychedelics Today. This is Joe Moore coming at you from Breckenridge, Colorado. Today on the show, we have Dina Justice. Dina and I met in Arizona at the Arizona Psychedelic Conference, February 2019. First came over to the table and kind of started talking to us and asking questions. And eventually we started talking more and more. And uh, she's been really helpful for us. Um, Kyle and I got to meet up with her in Golden, Colorado, not that long ago. Uh, I think it was maybe May. So maybe that is a long time ago. I don't, I don't actually remember what month, but it was really nice to link up with her and, and chat more. She's a NLP trainer and coach, neuro linguistic programming NLP, and it's a really interesting technique and technology. I suggest you check it out. It's got a lot of orientation and um, angles that could be helpful with psychedelic work. So something to look at and i think you'll like it this interview is really fun for me a little short um but we're gonna have dina on a few more times in the near future i hope and i i would really like to know what you think of this episode this is we're not talking specifically about psychedelics in this episode but a lot of this stuff is very applicable to psychedelic work and psychedelic assisted therapy etc um yeah let me know what you think i i loved recording with dina and um just really excited to have her on again. So uh, that's it for the intro. This show is brought to you by Onnit, O-N-N-I-T dot com. You can use the code PSY today, P-S-Y today for a discount on any order except for exercise equipment. <laughs> so check it out. I am a big fan of their products. Uh, you probably heard about them through Joe Rogan. I think he's a co-owner. Aubrey Marcus, Bodie Miller, and a few others. They make really awesome products that are top-notch. Um, and yeah, I've used, I think the mushroom products, I think I've used their, oh, I had this one thing that was a delicious kind of um, chai mix. And that was extraordinary. It had all sorts of like really cool uh, nutritional supplements in it. Um, I used one called Strong Bone that was, uh, I think that's what it was called. Or something like that, Strong Joint Support. And it was like glucosamine, chondroitin, you know, kind of the normal joint support supplements. And <laughs> they got me because it was... Um, uh, Bodie Miller had a, uh, was a U.S. Olympic ski racer, retired now, but he said, I use this because I crash onto walls at very high speeds. And I was like, well, that's kind of like my skiing. So let's uh, <laughs> see if I can't uh, prevent some bone breaks. Um, yeah, so I've had some of their other stuff. I, I drink one of their, uh, out of one of their coffee cups all the time with Socrates on it. So yeah, check them out. Again, O-N-N-I-T dot com, side today for a discount. I think it's 10%. Check it out. And also by Audible, audibletrial.com slash psychedelics today, and you get a free month and a free audio book, and you get to keep the audio book even if you don't uh, keep your trial or your membership up. So I, I love the recent Mike J. Mescalin book, Jim Fadiman's Psychedelic Explorer Guide is up there. There's all sorts of Alan Watts and Tim Leary books. The uh, Harvard Psychedelic Club is up there. Bunch of extraordinary books. Same thing with Michael Pollan if you haven't read that yet. Um, how to change your mind is up there. So check it all out again. Uh, you can get there audibletrial.com slash psychedelics today, or go to psychedelics today.com slash welcome. And you can get the free trial and the discount. Um, so that's it for ads. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. And again, let us know what you think. Psychedelics today, email at gmail.com or leave us a review on Facebook. See you on the other side. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to um, Psychedelics Today. Today, we are joined by Dina Justice from the Ecstatic Collective. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Joe. I'm happy to be here today. Really happy to have you too. So we met up at the Phoenix, Arizona Psychedelic Conference. I, I kind of forget what it was called. That was in February 2019. You um, approached our table and started chatting us up and we have been able to kind of get to know each other over the last nearly a year now, which has been really cool and really excited about your work. And um, just curious if you can kind of maybe give us a little bit of a rundown of what is NLP and, and how you might interact with that. Yeah, thanks. So NLP, my experience with NLP, that's a really good question. I grew up with a lot of NLP already in my life. And so it was just this natural progression. And I just would love to take a quick minute to explain sure. a little bit more about what NLP is, Joe. 
Uh, for people that don't know, NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And to break that down, neuro is all about our mind and what happens as we process the world through our five senses within our mind. Linguistic has to do with the language and our nonverbal communication, how we're actually taking all of that information that our, our mind is receiving through our five senses and encoding it. And then programming is about how that information is then creating our reality around mm. us because of the language and communication which we're using. So when we know more about our brain and our mind and how they operate, we can use quick tricks and little navigation tools to make rapid transformational change. So I became really interested in NLP kind of always having that in the background of my life and really being taught. It's all about the power of your mind. You can use your mind to accomplish anything you want in the world. You get to create your reality. What are you choosing consciously? So I then got more exposure through Tony Robbins events and decided to become a trainer of NLP because of its impact in my own life and then seeing how I was utilizing it with my coaching clients. Mm. Was there an individual in particular that kind of brought this into your attention? It wasn't one person in particular. I grew up in a really forward-thinking spiritual community in Denver, and that's where it was kind of always a part of my life. Um, mm. My whole mom's side of the family, for the most part, was really involved in that community in many ways for many, many years. Great. And NLP does have a history with the psychedelic world. Um, like I was saying in the first take, Robert Anton Wilson is the one that comes to mind most prominently for me. Uh, good friends with Tim Leary, great writer on the topic of psychedelics, hypnosis, psychology, et cetera. And he was very into NLP. And I think he was even a trainer for a while. So it's got a very many decades long history with psychedelia. So thanks for keeping it alive and keeping yeah. it going. Yeah, yeah. Now, what does it look like with some of your clients? Like, I, I, from what I recall, you're able to help them, like, kind of reframe a lot of things and, and just make massive change, like just right. through NLP type modalities. Exactly. Massive change just through NLP. And so much, I, I also like to separate mm. out, like, yeah, there's this whole thing called like NLP, which involves some quick tricks and things we can do with our mind. But a lot of the basis of NLP is really about language and communication and the things that are happening unconsciously, which I think is why it's so powerful to talk about this when you bring it into non-ordinary states of consciousness. 93% of our communication happens at the unconscious level. So what are we doing in that communication that's either helping people or hurting them, helping ourselves or hurting ourselves? So I think it's really powerful to learn more about how do we structure language? How do we structure our communication? How do we communicate in that 93% that's unconscious, bringing that into the conscious level so that people can really understand how to be master communicators and then letting that drop back into the unconscious level, right? We call that unconscious competence. And then utilizing language and communication with volition and intention, which is where it gets really powerful in non-ordinary states. That's huge, right? So like, say for instance, somebody who is just wildly stuck in their life, perhaps unemployed, thinks they're totally worthless and nobody likes them, et cetera. Like that's self-talk. That's a lot of kind of internal dialogue. And that, mm -hmm. that just kind of sets you up for a downstream kind of catastrophe. But if you can reframe a lot of this stuff and say, oh, look, now I can communicate super well with folks and understand what my own self-talk is doing. Right. Like, from what I understand, that's a big part of it, right? Yeah, that's exactly correct. That's a huge part of it. Uh, I like to even phrase that part as like, put good in, get good out. Language right. and communication starts with ourselves. How are we communicating with ourselves? Because that actually becomes an expression of what we're putting out there to the rest of the world. Mm. So when you're saying good things to you, that tends to be 
what we call the projection, what we're putting out there. And I think this is something that's really, really important when it comes to NLP is this concept of perception is projection. And it's really important in how I work with my coaching clients because if I have a thought about somebody else, that's my projecting my beliefs onto them and they're going to typically actualize that. Right. So when we tell somebody, oh, I hate when you do X, Y, Z, and we constantly reinforce that story, that projection is literally telling the unconscious mind what to keep doing because we're also saying it in a negative way. So I'll come back to that. I'm just going to pinpoint that negative talk that we say. I'm going to pinpoint that and come back to that in a second. But coming in, back into this concept of perception is projection. As a coach, yeah. I look at what do I want to help my clients actualize, right? Or not even as a coach, but as a romantic partner, what do I want to help my relationship actualize? And those are the words and the things I need to be putting out there, the energy I need to be contributing to. And I think this is really important when we're talking about working with people in non-ordinary states of consciousness, whether it's meditation, breath work, or you're in a psychedelic state what's the projection and what's the, pro that you're putting out there, but also that other people around you are putting out there, whether it's your friends, whether you're sitting in ceremony with a shaman, whether you're working one-on-one -on -one with a guide or um, a, a psychedelic assisted psychotherapist, whatever it might be, what are they projecting into that space too? Because that's going to make a really big difference. And then now I'm going to come back to that concept of like the negative stuff. It's a really big no-no in NLP is to say things like don't or not, because our mind, our unconscious mind especially, is lazy. And so it actually has to process the actual thing before it can turn it into a negative. So if you say, don't walk on the grass, we have to go, okay, well, what does it mean to walk on the grass? But then our mind gets lazy and it doesn't actually like to do the conversion. Like, oh, stay off the grass, right? So in NLP, we also like to say, say it the way you want it. Say it the way you mean it. Say it the way you intend it. And I think that's a really valuable aspect to bring into uh, non-ordinary states is what messages are you putting out there for people to receive when they're in, a, in an altered state? make it good, make it for them, make it positive and for the future. Um, is it ecological? Meaning, is it good for the person? Is it good for all the people around that person? And is it good for the world at large? Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I was always excited about NLP's holistic kind of alignment for like the totality of interactions. And like that number you kind of threw out, 93% of our communication is unconscious. There's not too many other methods that kind of teach you what might help <laughs> like improve that. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, like maybe you could master like speech writing or like speech presentation, but without the becoming aware of these tools and aspects, like you're kind of potentially missing a big portion of these things. And I like, I like how you're bringing in that non-ordinary states work because people are really open and that's, I like the word imprinting. There's kind of this imprinting yes. phase before, during, and, and after I can really, you know, make massive change happen, especially if you have the right tools on hand. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's really, really important to be considering what that impact is and making sure it's an alignment for whoever that person is or right. the people are, right? <laughs> Right, exactly. So you're in California. There's a ton of people doing ayahuasca all the time. You know, peyote, I'm sure, is not uncommon. San Pedro, all this stuff. So you you run into folks that, that kind of need some help with integration and, and you do some NLP coaching with them. Can you, can you talk about what that looks like? Yeah, thank, thanks for that segue here. Funny that you were thinking that exact thing because <laughs> that's where my mind was going talking about <laughs> that connectedness, right? Yeah, in NLP coaching and integration, it is really bringing in this additional component of what is somebody creating in their reality based on their language and communication. 
what I really like to do with people, no matter what kind of non-ordinary state they might be exploring, is having the opportunity to talk with them in a deep dive in advance of whatever non-ordinary state they're going to work in. Because what's happening there as an NLP practitioner and a trainer of NLP, I'm actually looking for the patterns they're utilizing in their language. Because that what they're saying doesn't create just the problem that they might be dealing with now. It's the pattern that's creating all of the problems typically that they're coming into touch with in their life. And so when we can look at the bigger picture of that pattern, we can actually help them solve a lot of their problems at the same time. Instead of just like, oh, we're going to work on this problem. It's identifying the pattern. And then in NLP, it's what we call doing a pattern interrupt where we go in and we interrupt the pattern. That's part of what the power of non-ordinary states do too. It's like the neural network's so deeply wired, we have to interrupt that super highway to get a different message in. So it's identifying what those super highways are and then how do we put in the stop and the detour Mm -hmm. into something new and identifying what it is that needs to be installed. We always call that installing at the unconscious level. So if we're working with a problem of somebody isn't getting what they want in their relationship, but we dive deeply into that and we find out it's really a deep belief about I'm not enough. I need to make somebody prove that they love me. I need to test people constantly. Those sorts of things. (laughs) That I'm not enough goes across the board, right? And we can, I actually have conversations with people to identify. It's like, okay, well, how are you doing that currently? Well, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm doing, I'm not enough by testing my partner to make them prove they love me by being passive aggressive. Um, it, you know, we can get a whole list of how they're doing the pattern currently. And then we go, okay, well, what do you want instead? Well, I want to know that I am enough. I want to trust that I'm enough for me. I want to trust that when my partner says, I love you, you are enough, you're chosen, that that actually goes in, right? So we can utilize all of this powerfully just with NLP, but if we add non-ordinary states, whatever that state is, that message can go even deeper. And what I like to really draw people's attention to is it's not just about like doing this work and thinking about it consciously. It's that moment when we light up like a Christmas tree. I call that the aha moment. You know what I'm talking about? That happens because we literally have neural networks and neurotransmitters in every single cell in our body, not just in our brains. And that's why we light up like a Christmas tree because we literally get it it's like, oh, that new neural network has been activated. Aha! Uh-huh. So it's really powerful to take these NLP techniques and non-ordinary states of consciousness and combine them because the power of the two together is even more transformative than either one on their own. That's what I see happening. That's really cool. Can you give like kind of a genericized example of a success case maybe? Well, I think too, just that, that one I've already been talking about, the... Um, the I'm partner. not enough, right? Yeah. Coming mm-hmm. into that and then getting it and having that non-ordinary state where whatever state that is, is showing you all the different ways in which you're acting out, I'm not enough. And then to get to that moment of breakthrough, right? You feel the breakdown happening, all the resistance happening. Like resistance is always a sign of a breakthrough. Can you work with that resistance and identify it and go, oh my God, look at all the ways this is showing up in my life, right? This person has made their dad prove that they love them and their sister make them prove that they love them. This is a real example I'm giving you here. Uh, All the ways in which they have looked to succeed in life in order to prove I'm enough, right? Multiple degree, multiple advanced degrees, financial success, et cetera. But underneath all of that was this deep, like, I'm not enough. Well, we got to identify that. We did a lot of major change work. Person goes off and has their non-ordinary state of consciousness experience. And because we've already unwound so much of that to begin with, 
like the breakthrough transformational work is even more profound. And they come out with like, wow, I'm really enough. Mm -hmm. I'm enough for me. And I can start to show up in my life differently. Yeah, that's huge. I'd really... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing, right? There's so many different ways of approaching kind of non-ordinary or psychedelic work where people, you know, have all these different frameworks and, you know, yeah. it's, it's all metaphor based kind of like mm-hmm. you look at internal family systems. It's like, right. okay. Yeah. Like your inner child, your inner father, like, sure. But like, is that really like the metaphor you want? Does that make the most sense for you? And NLP for me just seems like one of the more sensible kind of methodologies and frameworks, it it leverages neuroscience, it leverages the history of psychology and, you know, doesn't have to create too many new things. I don't think like, let's kind of break it down maybe a little bit like the, uh, the NLP lens of looking at the world is kind of like, it's it's kind of start sensorily like perception, right? And then like you said earlier, perception then into language, but you know, people have maybe perhaps dominant sensory language types, like someone uses a color metaphor, visual metaphor, a sound metaphor, like I hear you, I see what you're saying, I feel you. Um, And there's a few others. So like that kind of can help build this rapport and this therapeutic relationship or coaching relationship. And I think, I think it's really, really important. And, you know, you mentioned Tony Robbins earlier, like people kind of don't value him perhaps appropriately because he's, he's done a lot. And he's coached some very influential people in the world stage, like I think past presidents multiple times and, um, yes. you know, with NLP often, like I think even Al Gore went to him for NLP coaching. So like there's, I don't know, how do you, how do you kind of position NLP? Like it, when there's so many like powerful people that have been into it in very influential yeah. people. It, it is incredibly influential. And so the other thing I think is really important to note, Joe, like NLP is not some magical thing. It's literally what we're already doing. And it's just the framework in which we learn it and we understand Making how is our mind conscious. and our language creating our reality. Exactly. So, you know, Tony Robbins, everything he does is NLP. He walked out, my, the story I to my understanding is he walked out of his master practitioner training session because he was like, I don't need the actual certification to prove I can do this. And I'm going to go do this. (laughs) And so he actually calls it neuro associative conditioning. So he calls it something a little bit different. That's his spin on it. But everything he does is utilizing the power of the mind and language to help people transform their realities. And he does it absolutely masterfully. I think it's a a great example too. When people feel like Tony Robbins rubs them the wrong way or they see him do an intervention and feel like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. That's not compassion or whatever. That's exactly what NLP is about. He's interrupting their pattern by doing whatever he did that other people go, oh my God, why would you ever? Because his job is not to caretake their emotions in that state. His job is to help them make massive transformational change. Right. And it's our ability right, as a coach, to not as a therapist. That. Exactly. Right. And it's like, oh, that's the point where we need to do something different. And that's why it works. People get that pattern interrupt. So I think it's beautiful to watch him in action. I've gone to Tony Robbins events, not for the event, but to watch him because I become a better trainer by watching Tony Robbins do his work. Mm. He's really, really good. And I wanted to tie it back into Joe, to what you said about people are using different, we call them representational systems, right? Whether it's visual, auditory, kinesthetic, the other ones, the other big one is um, what we call auditory digital, and that's our self-talk. So a lot of people use one of those four systems as their primary way of relating to the world. There's a simple little quiz you can take to figure out which one is yours. It's something that I, everybody does when they come through my NLP training courses. And what's really valuable about that is 
we get to understand how we relate to the world. And when we can understand what to listen for in other people's communication, we can determine what representational systems they're using to relate to their world. And it actually helps us talk to each other more clearly and for our message to get through. When people don't speak in the same representational system, it's like they're speaking a different language. So Virginia Satir, she's a, got a long history as a family therapist. She's really good at translating people's representational systems. So if a couple comes in and sits down and says, I'm so frustrated my husband never hears what I'm saying, I tell him over and over and he just doesn't ever hear what I've got to say. And then the husband says, you know, I say things so clearly and she doesn't see what I'm saying. She doesn't, you know, I I want her to look at what I'm saying and she doesn't see it. So he's speaking in a visual representational system and she's speaking in an auditory representational system. And our representational systems are most defined when we're in a stressed situation. So when we can understand what people are saying and then actually translate, so, you know, Virginia Satir would say, oh, your husband isn't able to hear you right now because you're not listening to what he's saying, right? So all of a sudden she uses the word listen instead of the word see or look and wife can now get it. So We can do this in our everyday language, in our relationships, in our work environments, with our kids, with anybody we come into contact with, because all of a sudden, we literally are learning new languages by learning more about the language that we're utilizing. So we have a bigger ability to talk to everybody when we're like, oh, they're talking in a visual representational system right now. I'm going to use predicates, words that they'll be able to connect to because they're a visual person. And then that's also part of the power of the mind and what Tony Robbins bringing all of this together. We always, in NLP, it's all about what does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Mm. Because when we bring in multiple representational systems, it's more powerful in the change work within our mind. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Um, As soon as you said Virginia Satir, I had to look her up um, because it really struck accord. I was like, wait, didn't I study her a bunch? And (laughs) I actually used to go to a men's group in Boulder based on the work of Virginia Satir. And, um, it was super helpful for me. I think the, the really old man, I think he was like 90 when I was going, he actually worked with Virginia for like 30 years, like toured with her. Wow. Yeah. I I imagine that was a pretty amazing group. It was, yeah, it was amazing really intense met weekly and it was totally free. So it was super cool. It was very helpful for me at a really transformative point in my life. And, um, I see here that like Google's even saying like grinder bandler and Ericsson were all kind of associated with Virginia. So she's kind of in this like Ericksonian hypnosis NLP tradition. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which is really neat. What, do you know if she was involved directly with NLP at all? Yeah. Well, I could connect you and all of these people together. So you talked about Bandler, Grinder. And so Bandler and Grinder were the really the founders of NLP. And what they noticed was that Virginia Satir had a way of really helping people make massive transformational change by getting specific. She was able to chunk things down and to help people figure out what was going on in that direction. So this whole concept in NLP is what we call the hierarchy of ideas. So Virginia Satir was all about chunking down. And one of the questions we could ask, which is, this is a great takeaway for anybody listening. Like if you want to help conversations move, the hierarchy of ideas does it. So with chunking down, we ask the question, how specifically? You're upsetting me. Well, how specifically? I'm overwhelmed. Well, how specifically are you overwhelmed? Mm. So Bandler and Grinder studied Satir and said, oh, well, you can help people make massive change by getting more specific. And then there was Erickson. And Erickson moved the completely opposite direction. So in the hierarchy of ideas, we call that abstraction. So he's all about chunking higher, 
talking higher to move into abstract ideas, which is where trance happens. Right. He was more focused on hypnosis. hypnosis. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So Bandler and Grinder then noticed like, wow, Erickson's also able to make really massive transformational change by getting more abstract. Mm. So understanding this hierarchy of ideas can be really helpful. So we had, well, how specifically that can help us. And the other questions we can ask to move into abstraction are questions like, well, what's the higher purpose or what's the highest intention? And I think those three questions can be really, really magical and helping make people make massive change in everyday life and in non-ordinary states of consciousness. We get results in life and we get answers in life based on the questions we're asking. And that's what NLP is really focused on, is how do we ask better questions? So the NLP model of coaching is all about, let's ask better questions of our clients to help them find better answers, better solutions better changes for their life. It's really about asking good quality questions. So I love what's the higher purpose or what's the highest intention of this or right. Like dealing with overwhelm. Well, how specifically are you overwhelmed? You can find really good answers by asking these questions. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. I, yeah. So Oh, there's my dog. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> curious where we want to transition to from here because we kind of covered like NLP and the origins of NLP, how NLP kind of relates to non-ordinary work, perhaps like how maybe like what your training looks like because, you know, we talked about your training a, a bunch and I'm, I'm really interested in doing it, but how does that look? It's like a three-month project or two-month? Yeah, thank you for asking about that. I offer NLP training and it specifically focuses on how are we utilizing these, these language tools, communication tools, plus the other things that I teach to help people in non-ordinary states of consciousness, whether that's yourself or whether you're doing breath work, whatever that non-ordinary state might be, because I think it's so important to understand the 93% of what we're communicating when it's unconscious and to then utilize that with volition and intention to help people. So that training is a 12-week training total. The first section is eight weeks where we focus on NLP, most specifically language and communication. Just that eight weeks alone changes people's lives. Like we're five or six weeks into the current cohort and people are like, oh my God, I can't believe how much this is impacting my day-to-day life. I currently have a woman who has a pretty significant leadership role on an all-male tech team who's been struggling to be heard. And we've been talking about what she needs, like what happens unconsciously in our communication. And she's made like, two or three minor changes in what she is doing that affects communication unconsciously. And all of a sudden she's getting hurt. She's like, I cannot believe what's happening. The change that's happening, how much more respect I get, how much people are listening to my ideas now. It's super significant. So we do eight weeks of NLP language communication and then essentially four more weeks which is a combination of three days of in-person hands-on training. And during that, we're covering the hands-on techniques that are part of NLP, which has to do with anchoring, another beautiful process called parts integration, which is all about if you feel like there's a part of you that wants one thing and a part of you that wants another and they're in conflict, it helps those parts really integrate and for people to feel a deeper sense of wholeness and connectedness. There's a handful of other amazing NLP techniques we do during this hands-on training as well that all has to do with the way we're creating processes in our mind and our reality. So what we're doing with our senses and how we can make changes in our mind about our sensory input and get different output in our behavior. It's super, Mm. super awesome. Helps people stop eating foods that they don't want to. Can help people stop smoking, lose weight, all sorts of different tricks. It's really, really fascinating. And these things are quick. 
And then the other part of the the in-person training is what we call timeline therapy. And timeline therapy is a really beautiful process that utilizes the unconscious mind to make massive change and let go of negative emotions, big ones like anger, fear, sadness, hurt, and guilt, as well as big limiting decisions. And then we also cover Milton model hypnosis a little bit deeper and what we're doing with language patterns. I'm just realizing too, like everything we just said, I need to come back and make a correction on the hierarchy of ideas. Sure, go for it. I'm going to pin that for a minute and not get (laughs) sidetracked. So all of the training wraps up. Then once everybody's learned the NLP portion, the timeline therapy, the Milton model hypnosis, everything concludes with the NLP model of coaching, which can be used in any context, business, sales, education, coaching, relationships, specific things, whatever it is, it doesn't matter because it's all about asking better questions. So people walk away with four different certifications from the training. So NLP practitioner, timeline therapy practitioner, Milton model hypnosis and NLP coaching. So it's a certification a coaching certification as well. That's great. Yeah. So do we have to circle back to something now? Yeah. Do, do you have any other questions about the training? Before um, we go back? <laughs> no, let's just go for it. Yeah. Thanks. So um, I'm so in my flow over here. I'm mixing up my Milton model and Erickson. And I just want to bring clarity to that. So when we say Erickson, we mean Milton Erickson. And the Milton model is hypnosis and transinduction. So I just wanted to bring that clarifying pin in there so that people mm. are like, oh, what's Eric? What's Erickson mean? I never said Milton <laughs> Erickson. Right. So I wanted to make that clarification. And we use him, um, his hypnosis model, a little bit in our form of breath work. Um, kind of in the induction of relaxation a little bit, just very specific language tricks, Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing too, you know, uh, serious. It's just like a couple word choices here and there. Um, and it seems to work great. Yeah. I've become a lot more comfortable delivering the, you know, what do you call that? (laughs) A guided meditation or guided relaxation speech Yes. because I am more intentional about my language. It's really, right. Really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Can I add a little bit more based sure. on what you Absolutely. just said there, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. So Milton model and hypnosis in general is such a beautiful thing to understand when we're working with non-ordinary states or even just in our day-to-day lives, working with children and stuff. Because again, this is coming back to the 93% of communication that happens unconsciously. So part of what people learn when they come through NLP is What's happening when we actually say the words? It's about our intonation, our inflection, the emphasis we put on words or the emphasis we don't put on words. That makes all the difference. So you can identify a really great meditation teacher because they'll have had some sort of hypnosis training in the way they actually deliver that meditation. And so when you look, that's why I teach Milton model hypnosis specifically. I don't do all the other hypnotherapy stuff, although I'm certified to train people as master hypnotherapists. I love the Milton model of hypnosis because it's this beautiful, normal language that we already use, but we're using it with intention and volition to put people into a state of trance. And it's really magical. Mm. Mm. And I love, you know, learning the NLP and the hypnosis because then you can start taking that into your day-to-day life and it starts making a difference. I even write a lot of my materials in a way that most people look at it and they're like, I don't understand why you have words bolded and italicized and it's hard (laughs) for me to look at the page. And then they, like, as they come through the training program, they start to understand that's all intentional because it's talking to their mind at the unconscious level, which helps people get the information even quicker. It's all easy and effortless. Right. And, you know, this is something that's everywhere, right? It's in sales and marketing. It's, yeah. It pervades our world <laughs> in a lot of it levels. It really so does. It, you know, getting the training and going, oh, 
that's what they've been doing. <laughs> and, and so, you know, if someone's trying to sell you, you know, something that you perhaps don't need and you can see through the marketing, you go, okay, I understand what they're yeah. doing now. And you have like a more f- complete perceptual apparatus or something like a exactly. cognitive kind of loop to go, wait, <laughs> uh, that's what they did. Cool. Got it. That's what they did. Oh, wow. on to the next, you know, you don't have to be mad about it, but you just go, okay, that's just what people do. And, exactly. Um, you know, when you communicate very effectively, like you're going to do that. And why not? I should probably start bolding stuff in my emails. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, right. <laughs> I think I do it in some of the marketing emails um, for psychedelics today, but not not too many for my my day gig yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I really find it like the fact that I haven't done the training yet is super interesting to me. Like I was going to do it with this guy in like Poughkeepsie, New York, Phil Farber, who's like uh, super into like. Um, occultism and NLP. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go to your training back when I was living in New Hampshire. Um, but it just never came together. And he, you know, he'd been training for like 20, 30 years at that point. So I'm like, okay, you probably get it. But why didn't I pull the trigger? I just didn't prioritize it, even though it was super fascinating. I think I just prioritized breath work more though, more than anything, maybe for whatever reason. I just love my teachers. Maybe that's it. (laughs) <laughs> That's a good thing. And now yeah. you're ready, huh? Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's super fascinating stuff. I've never never found anything I've read on the topic boring. Um <laughs> which is you yeah. know, that's kind of a hint, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh right, I'm already doing all of this, but what if I actually truly understood what I'm doing so that mm. I can make myself more clearly heard, understood, so my message gets through, so I can actually relate to people differently. This is an interesting thought I just had. So um, Kyle and I are getting a additional level of kind of training and breath work right now to be become like, you know, deep in our level of skill with training other folks. And, and we're dealing with like Greek philosophy right now. And a huge uh-huh. portion of Greek philosophy was what they, well, I don't even know if it was really philosophy, but sophistry. So it was like these really skilled linguists that would help people make orations that convinced people of things. So it didn't necessarily have to be logically consistent, but it could be like a whole thing. So it's, to me, it's like those were the original guys doing it. And when, I don't know how to even term this, there is like a different type of consciousness that I think humans had 2,500 years ago and it, it, their minds didn't really look like ours. So it's on the whole, you know, perhaps they did, perhaps I'm wrong, but you know, people were, you know, not hundreds of generations deep in this thing. So I don't know how else to phrase it, <laughs> but, but it's a very different world. Like the plays, played a huge part in their ecstatic yes. experiences you yeah, know, back to your company exactly. name, ecstatic collective, like drama, like why can't movies do this to us? And maybe they should. Well, and, and I love that you're bringing that up too, right? What are you subjecting yourself to every day? Because your unconscious mind is picking up all of that information. I don't own a television. I refuse to watch the news. I select things to watch on occasion. Very, very, intentionally. And I even have a hard time because of the messaging in it, right? Like I haven't been to a movie in three years. It's hard for me to sit down and do it. I have a hard time reading a novel. I haven't read a novel in like eight years now because the way things are communicated is not good in my opinion. What if people (laughs) wrote more intentionally with a consciousness about the message that's happening consciously and unconsciously, Mm. right? I won't listen to most mass media music, right? Like I want lyrics that are supportive and positive and have good intention behind them. And the more I'm selective with what goes in, the better output I get in my own life. Mm. Right? Amen. It makes a huge <laughs> difference. And, and coming back to what you were saying about, you know, these ancient philosophers and is it the Greeks you're studying? Right. Yeah. We're, we're working on the Greek pre-Socratic philosophers and their relationship to the sophists and stuff like that. It's, it's really interesting. 
and how they're creating orations to get people into agreement. We gain agreement by moving things into abstraction. And when we start to move up into abstract language, that puts us in trance and things don't have to make sense when we're in trance. We're just mm. like, oh, it's a way we reduce resistance when we're having communication mm. is to move up in abstraction. Yeah. So that's exactly what they were doing. Sure. And I, I, I feel like they learned it from like some older religious traditions and kind of adapted it for like their, you know, contemporary circumstances. And it's fascinating, you know, when just barely living out of caves, like barely non vagrant <laughs> tribal. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool stuff. So, um, it's really I cool. think we need to wrap, but you're going to come back on the show. We're going to do at least a few more of these. We are. I'm looking forward to the next one. I want to talk about, um, how we communicate with our unconscious mind. Yes, absolutely. Dina, can you give us your website? Yes, it's ecstaticcollective.com. I'm going to spell that out. A lot of people have a difficult time with the word ecstatic. So it's E-C-S-T-A-T-I-C collective.com. Very cool. Dina Justice, really appreciate you coming on. And I really look forward to the next time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And there you have it, Dina Justice on Psychedelics Today. What did you think? Um, I'm really excited about NLP. I think I'm going to get certified in the near future. It's been on my radar for ages, probably since 2005 or so, maybe even 2004. So it's about time. It's uh, really fascinating stuff. I've read enough books about it. I actually even read a fiction book. Um, what the hell was it called? It's by that guy, Phil Farber, I mentioned. Um He's got some interesting fiction that <laughs> is like uh, kind of the embodiment of um, NLP in a, in a really weird sci-fi fantasy book. So uh, if I could remember what it was, it was something like Atem, A-T-E-M, meta backwards. Um, anyway, if I can remember, I'll share the link on social. So if you want to check that out, check us out on uh, the Facebook group, Psychedelics Today group on Facebook. It's a huge group now. Um, a lot of great conversation there. And I'd love to have you join us. Uh, what else? Dina will be back on the show. So stay tuned for more episodes of Dina if you liked her. Um, hopefully we can get more into specific psychedelic stuff and what does like um, ideal psychedelic therapy look like um, supported by NLP and um, more. Um, yeah, I could probably talk to Dina for a couple of weeks and not get too bored. So I hope you all enjoyed it. It was a really great episode for me to record. And um, again, check Nina out at the Ecstatic Collective. And if you like the show, just let us know. Leave us a review on Facebook or iTunes. We'd always love to have you do that. Or just tell a friend. So I think that's really it. Oh, no, that's not it. So um, <laughs> we are launching two new editions of our course for therapists and clinicians. If you are a therapist or clinician and want to dig into this psychedelic topic from a clinical perspective, come check us out. Um, psychedelics, no, what is the website now? Psychedeliceducationcenter.com or just psychedelicsay.com. You can find the class there too. So psychedeliceducationcenter.com. You can find the course for clinicians and therapists. There's two editions launching in February. One is uh, for more European friendly time. So like seven o'clock London time, I think. And the other one's seven o'clock US Eastern. Um, sorry, folks in the Pacific. I know it's a little tough time zone wise, but we'll get there. Promise. <laughs> We're working on it. Um, this latest class has been amazing. We're maybe two classes away from the end of it and people are psyched. And um, someone did mention the other day that this perhaps is a better value than the CIIS program. So uh, it's certainly less expensive. So <laughs> check it out and we offer community coaching all that kind of stuff so yeah, again psychedeliceducationcenter.com for more i am also hosting a transpersonal breathwork workshop february 8 in breckenridge you can find out more at psychedelicsday.com under events or breckbreath.com b-r-e-c-k breath.com it's a full day workshop um gotta get there kind of early and it goes till maybe 6 or 7 p.m um and yeah, I'm excited. I've been a little physically hurt and just not really able to do a workshop for months. So very excited to be able to get back to it. 
So again, February 8th, Transpersonal Breathwork in Breckenridge. And we'd love to have you there. It's um, a really amazing group experience and yeah, just can't wait. So I think that's it for now. See you on the next episode, everybody. This is Joe Moore signing off for Psychedelics Today from Breckenridge, Colorado. Bye-bye.